What is up, Popper players? Welcome back to another Salt and Popper video. And today we have the full Bloomborough set spoiled. So we are going to be doing our Popper constructed set review of the new commons from the brand new magic set, Bloomborough. Bloomborough is a very flavorful uh, animal set uh, where there are no people. They are all uh, what look to be uh, animated and self-aware intelligent animals uh, fighting Calamity Beasts, which is a really cool like fantasy setting, um, very reminiscent of uh, a very specific popular book that many of you may know and have referenced. Um, but uh, unfortunately, while a lot of excitement has been generated around this set, uh, not a whole lot of power level for the popper format has come out of it. Uh, we have a couple cool cards to talk about, though, so we are going to start things off. Uh, joining me, as always, for these set reviews is Josh, a.k.a. Mayo on the internet. What's up, man? Hello, it's me. We're just going to jump right into it here uh, with a white card for you. Uh, this is a 2-mana one 2 bat bird for a white and a colorless. You get Life Creed Duo, uh, which has flying. And uh, whenever another creature you enter or you control enters, you gain one life. Um, so this is, uh, for all intents and purposes, another soul sister. Uh, White Weenie has seen a bit of a resurgence on the Popper Constructed uh, leagues and challenges. Uh, it has been putting up some pretty respectable trophy finishes. So the deck is definitely uh, kind of back in action uh, right now, at least. Uh, I don't necessarily think this card will make the cut there, um, especially not next to something like Suture Priest. But the card is... Notable in that we have another Soul Sister type effect in white. Uh, whereas before you would play green for Essence Warden, uh, you definitely have a density of these effects now where you don't really need to. Um, there, sh there could be some sort of like white black token stack uh, next to like Marauding Flight Priest where you just line up a bunch of these and get a ton of triggers. Um, could be kind of interesting. Definitely a little bit weak to, like, spot removal to stop the Blight Priest, and White is certainly weak in card draw, so it's going to lack the ability to really turn through cards to get to Blight Priest, but Black, uh, as we well know, is incredibly good at drawing cards and reanimating small creatures, um, so something like Mill or Deadly Dispute type effects could certainly dig you deep enough to find one, and things like, um, Unearth could certainly get them back if uh, if they find death. Uh, sort of interesting card. Not a ton to talk about. It is a 1-2, which is unusual for these type of effects. They tend to be on 1-1s. One um, so at least your, you know, end the festivities isn't going to completely ruin your day uh, on this card. And it does have flying, which is uh, particularly relevant in the metagame these days, especially as a 1-2. It's still going to trade with Refurbished Familiar and Sneaky Snacker, but at least it trades. Um, thoughts, Josh. What do you What do you got here? Uh, yeah. Um, it blocks the sneaky snacker just fine. Granted, it only does once, and sneaky snacker keeps coming back. Um, but if you would really like to, and this is just for the cool people out there, when you have life creed do out, and you have another creature trigger its effect, you can just like pretend it's got like vegetarian life link because it didn't actually have to hit anything. So, mm. yeah, just a little fun. <laughs> And by that he means we are scraping at the bottom of the barrel here because this set does not look promising. Um, but uh, next up... Just a happy little bat bird. We have a happy little frog advisor. Um, this is Bellowing Crier moving along to blue. This is a 2-1 frog advisor for a blue and a colorless. And when it ETBs, you draw a card and then discard a card. Worth noting, this is not a meg. Um, but also worth noting, it has a creature type that is uh, particularly relevant for some people. Josh, you want to talk about that? Yeah, so Frog is a new creature type that's coming out in this set. <laughs> that's right, Frogs, guys. Frogs uh, have yeah. always existed. This is not a new creature type. Of course, yeah, there was, it was just in Changelings before. And you see, the Frog mm. is really important for things like... Um, Uh, 
Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I frog also wasn't just in changelings. There's literally a frog samurai in MH2. But anyway, um, oh yeah, but like, come on, he's like the cool older cousin. Frog. So we're talking about persistent petitioners. Now, is that card gonna be good? No. Is that deck gonna be good? Also, no. So don't do it. They're too expensive, and the, you're not gonna win. But um, this set gives us two advisors. This is one we're talking about. The other one we're not gonna talk about because it's even worse than this. Um. It's a fibble sip. But in general, it's not too bad. It's a 2-1 for 2. If it had flying, it'd be pretty good, I think. Um, as it stands, are you going to run this over your Archaeomancer and, you know, your Augur of Bolas and your Seagate Oracles? Probably not. Um, but it might see some use. Uh, we'll see. I mean, it really is kind of... Slim pickings on the Bloomborough uh, Popper set cards. So we're going to skedaddle right along to a card that might actually see some play now that we've really got your whistles wetted for this uh, powerhouse of a set we've got. Um, next up is a card that could actually see play in one whole Popper deck. Hold your applause. Oh. This is Dazzling Denial. This is a blue instant for blue and a colorless, and you counter target spell unless it's controller pays two, but... But if you control a bird, you counter that spell unless its controller pays four instead. Now, this is notable only because Murmuring Mystic exists. You were never running this next to, like, Battle Screech, so don't get too excited. But with Murmuring Mystic, this card is actually pretty sizable. In a deck that used to have to run Prohibit to have a one blue pip counterspell, you now get access to Dazzling Gleam. Uh, it is, you know, essentially a miscalc until the mid game. But once you've got a murmuring mystic on board, uh, spell casts create a bird token. So upon resolution, this will see that there is a bird in play on your side of the board, and they will have to pay four. So this does become a pretty effective counter spell in familiars specifically. We'll see if it really makes the cut. I'm unsure because a lot of those decks have uh, cut down on their prohibits in the first place. Um, but Josh, what do you what do you think here? Um, I think that this actually would be really good in those decks with uh, with the Mystic, because Dazzling Denial is going to be effective early on, like straight up two mana mm -hmm. attacks on any spell they have. It's probably going to be a, a counter spell effectively, right? And then by the time you are able to land Mystic, there's really only like a turn or two where Dazzling Denial wouldn't counter something anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's one thing that's really kind of ripping me out about this card and uh, just to be clear that's a crab yeah mm -hmm. that. that's a spider crab right? it does look like a spider crab yes that's those um underwater uh, mm -hmm. yep yeah okay um and then that's, that's a hummingbird right yeah mm -hmm. yep that's a hummingbird and it, it's worth noting the flavor text is equally as cryptic it says maintaining brilliant plumage isn't just a statement it's a tactic which lends you to think that the hummingbird is it's doing that on purpose. Like hunting? It's on or it's maybe it's trend. defending itself against the spider crab? Maybe this is just a, a weird play on, like, haha, it's a spider after a bird because spiders have reach, but it's a crab for some reason. I don't know how this how this card makes any sense whatsoever, but it might be playable. Also, um, because... Of how the card works in conjunction with the art, it makes you think that the crab is countering the spell, and the hummingbird distracting you is making the counter spell more effective. So somehow the hummingbird and the crab are like teaming up. Because yeah, that makes a lot more sense because a lot of these cards are two different or like creatures. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. But. Uh, yeah, man, I can't. Very wait weird. Open. Very weird. Yeah. All right, moving on, we have a black card, which is Dire Sight. Now, this is a power corrupt card that's very similar to a couple other cards we've gotten uh, fairly recently and have seen play in the past. Uh, this is a three mana sorcery for two and a black. You get Surveil two, draw two, lose two. Um, this is Read the Bones, but with Surveil instead of Scry. Um, though still not as good as. Um, what is it? Rowan's Grim Search. Uh, that card is still miles better than this card, I think. Um, because, well, it's an instant. Um, 
Do I think this card's going to see a ton of play? No, probably not. Will this card see some play? Maybe. I mean, Read the Bones was fringe playable in mono black and sometimes in black white um, back in the day. And this is certainly better than Read the Bones. Is it good enough to see play in those decks? I'll leave it up to you to decide. Josh, what do you think? I'm born on this card between, like, because we, we had another power crept um, uh, uh, I'm blanking on it. Read the Bones before that, too. That's true. It was just the three mana instant um, draw two, lose two. And yeah, but I don't, I don't think it had the scry two. It didn't. It did not. It yeah. was just draw two, lose two. Yeah. So I don't know if instant is a better upside than the surveil two. We also had the uh, the domain one at instant too, right? That you yeah. like scry X and then draw two, or, gain two at instant. Uh, draw two, lose two. Yeah, I think so. Or yeah, draw two, lose, draw two, gain two. Holy shit. Um, oh. What a what a spell. You, um, yeah, I'm not sure if this card is going to make that big of a splash, but worth noting that we are getting some small power creeps to uh, to black spells and some black card draw. Is are you going to run this over Deadly Dispute? No, I mean let's just be honest. Are you going to run this over Rowan Scream Search? No, probably not. Um, but you know if you if you were playing mono black and you were already running Read the Bones, this is probably a card you want to play instead. Uh, next up, we move into red. But before we go into red, we have some honorable mentions. And what I mean by honorable mentions, before we, we finish up our uh, review here with the last couple of cards to talk about, uh, I would like to welcome three brand new cards to the Hall of Shame. Now, we haven't talked about this on the channel before, but for those of you who know me in real life, um, you would know that I have a Hall of Fame which is a little clear plastic box that you may have seen in my Monastery Swift Spear video that I retire all of the banned popper cards into from my collection. Unbeknownst to most of you, next to that box, there is a Hall of Shame, which go my least favorite draft shaft and cards that could have been great but weren't. And to that, we have three new additions from this set. We're going to kick it off with three tree mascot. Josh, you wanna you wanna read this its rights before we lock it into a box forever and never talk about it again ever. Alright, three tree mascot, you have the right to remain silent. You have the right to uh, um, no the three tree mascot, two mana, artifact creature, shapeshifter, changeling. Sounds okay. Until you get to pay a colorless, add one as the activation, and then you add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Wait, that still seems okay activate only once each turn it no longer seems okay and uh, it's a two one. it is a 2-1 for two it is a shapeshifter it's an artifact um all of these things seem like they would be positives especially with changeling man this was so close to a walls playable just so close um and once again wizards decided to ruin a potentially perfectly good uh card design with activate only once each turn my least favorite words in magic the gathering Second only to activate only as a sorcery, which is oh. equally terrible, and I hate it. Um, so oh, in boy. in the box you go go away. Please, please allow me to introduce you to your new least favorite words. Do you do you want to go ahead and tell them about uh, about the new card that's coming out in this set? Yeah, the next card. Uh, do you want to talk about the white one or the blue one? The blue one. Oh, okay. So the next one is Thought Shucker, which is a card, until you read past 98% of its text, seems incredible. This is a 1-3 for 2. It's a rat rogue for a blue and a colorless. It says Threshold. 2 mana, colorless and a blue. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on Thought Shucker. Pretty good. Draw a card. Ooh. Pretty insane. That's a period after that, right? There's nothing there else. There is a period after that. That is the end of that effect, which is crazy. Unfortunately, it is just the beginning of its limitations. Uh, activate only if there are seven more cards in your graveyard. Makes sense, right? It's a threshold ability. Yeah, That's what right. threshold does. Yeah. Oh, and only once. 
this this Sorry. this is where you say uh once each turn yeah nice. and i That's and i go I I no no, no only once ever only uh huh. which is really weird templating to be totally fair this should just read if it doesn't have a one one counter put yeah. a one one counter on it and draw a card or something like that you know there it feels like this is very strange templating but also absolutely horrible awful it's going to go into a box that i keep under all of my least favorite pictures of people and uh yeah i'm just never gonna think about this card again it's awful and then are you gonna put that box instead of another box and i'm gonna mail that box to myself <laughs> um yeah. but if you have threshold and you use its effect then you lose threshold then you gain threshold again i imagine you still can't activate it again yeah yeah that's correct as mm -hmm. far as i understand that's um it's terrible yeah so what's that white card you were talking about earlier yeah so the next card going in the hall of shame is a card that was so close to being a popper all-star and it breaks my heart because i love carrot cake Carrot Cake is a two-mana artifact food. It is a white and a colorless, and uh, whenever Carrot Cake enters or leaves the battlefield, you create a 1-1 one, one white creature token and scry one, and then you can pay two, sacrifice it, and gain three life. Sounds insane, right? Yeah, That's okay. because I read it the way it was supposed to be written. How it's oh. actually written is when it enters and when you sacrifice it, create a 1-1 one, one rabbit and scry one. And then you can pay two and sacrifice and gain three life, just like a food. So, unfortunately, sorry, Glint Hawk and Sky Fisher and Koldatha Rebirth lovers. Sorry, Boros Synthesizer as an entire archetype. This card that was supposed to be absolute slam dunk in your list is now utter garbage. Um, now, there is a small caveat to this. I personally will be throwing this in my Hall of Shame and never, ever entertaining the idea that this card is good ever again. However, Kaldatha Rebirth does make you sacrifice it, so there is a world in which a very, very aggressive Kaldatha Rebirth-style deck runs this over something like Lemboss or over something like um, Icker Wellspring, perhaps, um, the problem is, is that because you can't bounce this with Glinthawk or Skyfisher to get its effect, it really feels fairly lackluster. Um, I think that something like Barbed Batterfist is largely going to be better in those decks still than this card because of the synergy with just getting a 2-2 out of each recast instead of a 1-1 Scry 1. Now, that being said, that deck is very good when it's working very well and it feels pretty lackluster when it uh kind of misaligns its draws and synthesizer hits so perhaps the scry is actually valuable there um it's quite difficult to tell i personally am on the train that this card is terrible and it was so so close to being good uh but josh where where, where if anywhere do you think this may still stand a chance what are what are we thinking i mean yeah just that red white imaginary deck i think with the rebirths and with and with any sort of a bargain effect i guess but i don't remember there being too many proactive bargains i mean um, to be fair something along the lines of like sacrificing this to a deadly dispute to get a one one scry one and then get a treasure token and draw two cards probably isn't that bad but like yeah but is this better like, than lemboss probably I not like i would rather sacrifice a wellspring and not play white yeah um but that's specifically in a deadly dispute list yeah i, I was thinking along the lines of like orzov blade right because that deck did run deadly dispute at one point because it ran an artifact sub package to go with glint hawk and sky fisher so you could in theory run this and then instead of bouncing it with glint hawk and sky fisher just leave it on the board and then sacrifice it, and if you absolutely have to rebuy it, getting a 1-1 and scrying one isn't that much worse than scrying one and drawing a card. Um, I'm I'm just unfortunately not on, on board with this card. I think, as I've said previously to you, Josh, um, this card was so close to being incredible. It just needed to study for its wellspring test, 
and and somehow it 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 failed its wellspring test and and we ended up in like a spellbomb land it's it seems more specific than when this goes to the yes graveyard. or and... or even when it leaves play enters or leaves play would be yeah. so good could you imagine curving this into glintlock yeah and the thing is like i man with, with they just me, hate white being so much narrower it, i feel like it should be at least right too if not straight up draw they just draw. hate white like they really do mm -hmm. could you imagine if this was one one draw a card when it entered or sacrificed this card would be very good yeah i mean honestly if it god was forbid just... we get a playable card for popper out of this set wow if it was just enters draw a card make a one one and then sacrifice for the food effect only like i think that would even be better than yeah this absolutely mm -hmm. but it, they they threaded the needle on unplayable i know it's card. so sad it's so close but it's just i don't think it's going to make the cut now this may age incredibly poorly which i am totally okay i will own that but boy oh boy am i disappointed here god forbid we get a playable white card that draws cards um Okay, returning to our actual reasonably not as bad cards. Um, I, I would say best cards, but God, it doesn't feel that way, does it? Nope. Um, all right, so the next card is red. We are moving on to red now. We have Sazacap's Brew. This is a two-mana instant. It's for a red Nicholas. You can gift a tapped fish. For those of you that don't know, gift is a new mechanic. Uh, when you cast a spell, you may make a promise to an opponent to give them something. Either a card, or in this case, a tapped 1-1 one, one blue fish token. It is a promise I wish you could break, because I hate giving my opponents things, unless they're bad things. Um, but you get a reasonable payoff in this case. Most of the spells, I think, in this set that require you to gift something, the effect is not worth the gift you give them. In this case, I think it might be okay. So as an additional cost to cast this spell, you have to discard a card. So we obviously know where this is going. It's going into Rakdos Madness. And then target player draws two cards. So it's a discard, draw two, at instant speed, very similar to Demand Answers or the recent Highway Robbery, which has been seeing play with Plot, although that is a sorcery and allows you to sacrifice. So it does have a little bit of a slight backup plan. But this... Its upside is damage. So if the gift was promised, target creature you control gets plus two plus oh. Uh, now, unfortunately, it doesn't quite work with the timing of madness. So it's not like you can like madness in a kitchen and then give it plus two plus oh uh, and draw your cards. That doesn't quite work. You have to declare the target ahead of time. A little bit of a bummer there. But in more aggressive versions of the deck, things like they're running... Um, Goblin Tomb Raider, for instance, uh, I think this might actually be advantageous enough to warrant a couple of testing slots, potentially one or two slots going forward. Don't think this is going to be a full four of. Uh, it may never. It it might not even make it out of testing. But in general, I I don't think you're worried too much about your opponent having a one one fish in that deck specifically. Most of most, if not all, of your attackers are going to be flyers with uh, Sneaky Snack or Reaper is familiar um the the raven if you're running the raven and uh and obviously kitchen it the all-star so uh you get to dodge the fish most of the time anyway two extra damage is a lot in that deck especially on your draw so i think this deck, i think this card has promise what do what do you got yeah i think that this card um replaces that um the plot Cards highway robbery mm -hmm. highway robbery yes thanks yeah. yeah i'm good with card names i'm so good at this um we play this card. game a lot i uh, like too much i don't even remember the names of most cards anymore i remember effects though i think uh but anyways um so i think that the appeal of this card to me is no it's a fish the... oh yeah sorry anyways this this card with these scales no um as a <laughs> The appeal of this card to me is that who are you get to do the um, uh, thrill of possibility thing, where you discard a card mm -hmm. at instant speed, draw two cards, and then sure, if the gift is promised, you can target a creature to plus two plus zero. Oh. But I really like the idea um, of gifting a creature to them. I hate gifting a card, but I like the idea of gifting a creature and abusing that in a way of like um, 
Trespasser's Curse or something. Oh, sure. Lines, Which is in the uh, sideboard of that deck already. Mm hmm. Or even the, um, you mentioned him earlier, the, not Epicure, the, the Soul Sister guy. When they get a creature, they lose life. Oh, such a Priest? Yes. Please, yeah, Citra that's fair. I, I knew it was on the tip of my tongue. Um, Anyways, I like the idea of abusing that to effectively bolt them. <laughs> so you just draw yeah, a card that's fair. bolt them. I, I, I'm not often a fan of my opponents getting anything when I cast spells. That seems bad. Uh, I will say the promise of a card is significantly better for you, the opponent and worse for you than giving them a 1-1 tap fish. I will yeah. never promise my opponent a card unless I am on the ropes. So 1-1 uh, tap yeah, fish doesn't yeah. seem too, too bad. And in Popper Constructed, um, I think this card might see some play. What I enjoy about this is um, it's not like the Nuka Penna fish. This one can be blocked, and it does enter tapped. So right. they're not going to block with it on that turn. Yeah. I think that this is the best kind of creature you can give them. And the fact that it's a 1-1 do-nothing can't block that turn. Right. And largely, I don't think your creatures are going to be blockable by the fish anyway. So I think I think you're probably okay. All right. Uh, moving on to green, we actually surprisingly have a few green cards to talk about. Um, Back-to-back kind of green halls in popper playables for uh, the last couple of sets, which is really promising because green was basically dead in the format for several, several set releases. So really nice to see uh, green flip the script and uh, get a couple cards worth talking about. So we'll start with cash grab, uh, which is a two minute instant for a green and a colorless. You get to mill four cards, put a permanent card from among those cards into your hand. And then if you control a squirrel or returned a squirrel from your hand uh, to your hand this way, you get a food. Um, that last bit, never going to happen. You, you just, you, you're you not going to own a squirrel. You're not going to return a squirrel. You're not getting the food. So this is a mill four, put a permanent from among them into your hand. That's what we're, that's what we're getting. This is instant. Um, so it is like a grizzly salvage type variant. It's a Seder Wayfinder variant. It's, um, you know, something along those lines. Uh, those are as as you put it uh, more modal i think um this is like a malevolent rumble of sorts right you get a permanent from among four cards i don't know why they templated them differently it's a little weird that one of them is reveal the top four cards choose a permanent the rest go to your graveyard and one is mill four cards you get a permanent back from among them mm -hmm. It's weird to do that, like, back-to-back, -back, you know what I mean? Like, the, they're the same functional effect, but you're templating it differently both times. Seems weird. Um, in either case, I think Malevolent Rumble is largely better. It's going to see the lion's share of playability in Popper. It already, it already is. I mean, there's, like, three decks running that card already. Uh, what do you think, Josh? What do you got here? Uh, so I actually like the way that Malevolent Rumble is worded better. In the way I agree. That you have the... Um reveal the top four, pick one, with the rest in the grave, because that lets you get a card um, through things like rest and feast. Granted, oh, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you you get the thing before it goes to the graveyard. Yeah, that's fair. Or before it gets replaced from going in there. But point being, um, you know, Malevolent Rumble is better. Everyone knows this. The card is a instant speed mill four in green. It's good for things that want stuff in the graveyard, I guess. I, I'm not sure of a deck that sees this, but, um, you know, decks are running Seder Wayfinder. Decks are certainly running things that mill cards. They're running Malevolent Rumble. Uh, the Jund Reanimator list with Lotlet Giant and Dread Return certainly at least looks at this card. Not sure if it plays it. Uh, worth keeping in your toolbox while you're building your green decks for sure i think that cash grab specifically is better than grapple with the past unless you're doing a hardcore mill strategy Could uh, be. because grapple lets you get anything that's in your grave mm -hmm. um but cash grab um does hit four and it is they're both instant speed mm -hmm. um and that's the difference I thought you were talking about between Malevolent Rumble and Cash Grab was the instant, instant. versus sorcery. I mean, eh. You have me on the edge of my seat. You have me in the first half. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is a weird, 
effects to having green. I'll be honest. I was a little confused when I read it the first time, but I think I'm on board. So this is Sticky Tongue Sentinel. This is a 3-3 three, three for 3, 2 and a green. You get a Frog Warrior, and uh, it has Reach. And when it enters, you may return up to one other target permanent you control to its owner's hand. So this is a green Skyfisher of sorts, which is very strange. Um, Dream Trawler comes to mind for a type of effects like this outside of white. Uh, it's very interesting that some of these other colors get this type of effect. Uh, another one of these type of things where, like, I'm not 100% sure where this goes, but it's really nice to, like, keep in the toolbox, to keep in the memory bank for, like, when you're in brewer mode and you're going through and looking for playable cards. This is certainly one of those cards that, like, if a deck wants this card, this is the only card that could be in that card slot. You know what I mean? Like... It's quite literally the only green version of this effect, I think, at Popper. Uh, Josh, what do you think here? 3-3, three, three, Skyfisher in green. What do, you, what do you think? I think that the important part about this card is the sneaky reach. Um, it's not very sneaky. It's right at the top. but Yeah, but it's like hidden. Hidden so well. Mm -hmm. Like almost in the the type line. That's fair. Um, and this and small small uh, distinction, it is worth noting that this is up to one creature. So if it's your only creature and you don't want to bounce it, you don't have to, unlike Skyfisher. Other um, target permanent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One up to one other target permanent. So unlike Skyfisher where you have to bounce something even if you don't want to, uh this is your choice. You only have to do it when it's beneficial for you to do so. So uh, worth worth at least noting that that is a, a pseudo may effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the fact that it just blocks all of the flyers profitably is yeah. a bonus. Yeah, three three with reach in this format is pretty valuable. I mean, a lot of two one flyers floating around these days. Yeah, right. There's no flyer that goes above two power and three toughness. Well, at least not that's regularly played. I mean, I guess there's a 3-3 animated artifact land from Kenku, but yeah. Uh, that's fair. Yeah, you can totally trade with the indestructible artifact land. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, totally. Hmm. This is why uh, this is why we this is why you I'm tune like in for expert card. opinion like you can trade with the 3-3 three, three indestructible land. <laughs> yeah, I realized that my uh my sarcasm voice and my real voice are like the same. You have a sarcasm voice? Corporate wants you to find that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So any other uh, last finishing thoughts on this one? Yeah, he's a warrior. Oh, sorry. I mean, he's a frog. Nah. The creature types don't matter. Uh, yeah. Moving on. The last green card we have today is Sun Shower Druid. This is a sleeper pick, I think. It's subtle. It's kind of understated. This is the first card I saw from this set that I was like, I think this card actually has some legs in Popper. This is a 0-2 Frog Druid for one single green. And when it enters the battlefield, you put a 1-1 counter on target creature and you gain three life. Or, sorry, you gain one life. Three life would be way better. Um, so you get a 1-1 counter and you gain one life. This becomes a 1-3 gain one if you curve it, but... Really, I think this card shines when collaborated with other kind of green threats. So you get to do some really fun things with like Persist or Undying with this card. Um, you know, this this is a, a really nice blocking body and kind of incidental life gain against red decks and things like that. But on top of that, when you want to buff something else, it's just a 1-1 counter spell for one that also has a body. You can flicker it, it gains life, it pumps things. It kind of just checks all the boxes for me in like a weird utility type creature slot, especially low on the curve like a one drop. Um, Josh, what do, you, what do you think about this one? I think this card has potential. Yeah, I think that this card is great for putting a counter on your Basilisk that, that then gets you an Eldrazi that also gains you a life, and that's a creature that you can sacrifice with Deadly Dispute. Oh yeah, it goes in gli Glizzard combo, doesn't it? Yeah. Hmm, hadn't considered that. Also works yeah. very well with the new Evolving Witness, just saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, I hadn't thought about the best new Emergent deck in the format either. <laughs> real real hey. bold trade that you had there. I think that the best card in the set is going to perform the best. All right. Yeah, a uh, pretty good card. Uh, otherwise, pretty understated. Like I said, not crazy hype. 
Um, the next card is the last card in our lineup. This is an artifact. Uh, for those of you wondering, no, none of the hybrid cards are going to be on this list. They're all terrible. Um, with the exception of a few that might make the cutting cube, they are largely completely unplayable and laughable in Popper. The design statement that fewer commons per set meant better commons overall was a lie. <sighs> um, overall, definitely a lower powered set. I think we've all seen the spoiler by now. We, we knew that that was coming. Um, but it does seem like almost disproportionately low powered at the common level um there's some very powerful uncommons there are some crazy powerful rares and there are some very uh, powerful mythics coming out of this set um in limited and constructed for all formats so it seems very kind of strange that popper gets uh basically nothing from from bloomborough seems like a bit of a whiff um, but the last card we're going to talk about today is fountain port bell which is a very strange card to be on the top list but hear us out uh, this is a one mana artifact. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land, reveal it, then shuffle it, and put that card on top. And then you can pay one, sacrifice this, and draw a card. Um, very simple, very like streamlined, very efficient, very kind of just understated, much like the last card. Um, this card is kind of half Icker Wellspring, half Mycosynth Wellspring. You know, it, it kind of does an impression of both. Um, it's almost an implement. You know, it's definitely a little bit weird. It, it's versatile. Um, but if you look at it like this, um, it is, you know, part Traveler's Amulet and and part uh, Chromatic Star, right? So if you need a land uh, this turn, absolutely, it is two mana for a land drop. If you need a land, but you've already played a land this turn, you can just guarantee a land drop for next turn and then sandbag a one mana draw spell. And if you absolutely need a card, but not a land, you can put the search trigger on the stack and then sack this card in response to draw a card before you get your land. So it, it just kind of is good enough, I think, to, to warrant a little bit of play. Not 100% sure if and where this goes. Um... Man, this would be so good if it was just a dies trigger with draw a card. But uh, that being said, what do you what do you got here, Josh? What do you think? Um, so originally I was really high on this card, and then I realized I misread it. How did you thought, misread it? I thought it was Lay of the Land, true blue Lay of the Land. Well, green, um, where you put it in your hand, and then you have one to draw a card. Ah. Uh... And that card was insane. That was absolutely playable. This, I think, is still fine. Still totally fine. Um, possible that you don't want to play it um, in place of any uh, basic land cyclers. Um, but if there's a deck that you don't really plan on doing anything with uh, with Lorien or with uh, Troll or Oliphant, mm -hmm. I think this is still fine like it, it does let you sacrifice it with a um, deadly dispute hell it lets you just pay one to draw a card later on mm -hmm. as well and i think it it works best after you've played a land on that turn yeah i i think that you kind of hit the nail on the the head the sandbagging for the one mana to draw a card later on in the game is probably the strongest piece of this card um, the ability to just guarantee next turn's land drop and then just let it chill until you need the card is probably the best play pattern for this card. Um, yeah, I, I think it's like it's not standout. It's not dazzling. It's not shocking. It's not hugely overpowered. I think it's like just good enough. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. right on the line of mm -hmm. efficient enough that it's worth looking at and obscure enough that not everything is going to want to play it yeah and it's going to be cheap as hell so like yeah i'm going to get eight anyways right exactly um, also look and... at the little frog statue he's so scared of something um see you. so i think is this card um totally fits in a deck where you have large amounts of mana as well because you it's a may for the search for the land so... right mm -hmm. It is totally possible just to pay two to put it in play, sack it, get a land, right. or get a, a, 
next get a card. card. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really interesting card. Um, Ooh. Oh, sorry, I also forgot. Um, because you're searching through a hidden zone, you can totally say, yes, I'll look. Um, fail to find, and then pay one to draw a card. Right, you fail yeah, to find, obviously. So you don't put the thing mm-hmm. on top. Um, but in case of any brainstorm locks. Yeah, it'll also allow you to just, in general, look through your deck and see what your outs are, if you forgot. Um, yeah. And it, it can break, like, uh, like rat lock, I suppose, if you're getting... Uh, if you're getting rat locked somehow in the year of our Lord 2024. Um, but that that, that is uh, that is going to do it for the Bloomborough Popper set review. Admittedly, very low power set, uh, fairly disappointing uh, in terms of like meta shakeups. But that's not a bad thing. Now, as much as I trashed the set for being really underpowered and not giving us anything new, uh, which, you know, we want new, exciting things. Um the format has done a lot of changing, set after set after set, you know, like, wild swings in playability of various decks and individual power and standout cards. So, taking a set or two off, letting the, you, you know, the dust settle, letting the cards kind of, the decks and the meta iron itself out and become a little more stable to really identify standout decks and, and whether any changes are necessary on the ban level um, isn't necessarily a bad thing. And with this sort of release timing and how quick sets are dropping these days, you know, you, you got to kind of count your blessings when we get a, a set off. You know what I mean? So um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to take it as a positive. I'm going to say, you know, we get, we get a little bit of a break from the, the constant spoiler crazy, the updating every deck, every like three weeks, it feels like these days. And uh, we get to, we get to kind of just chill on this one. Uh, not a whole lot to do and not a whole lot to talk about and and honestly not a whole lot to worry about so um thank you so so much for tuning in josh thank you for hanging out and uh doing this set review for me always appreciate it but uh what i would appreciate from you guys you the viewers is to share this video with a popper player that you know it would really help the channel and it does so so help us grow and uh drop a comment down below i do reply and read every single comment myself it really does kind of make my day to see that you guys appreciate these videos and i really appreciate it so if you haven't already uh make sure you hit the subscribe button you know do the like thing do the algorithm stuff uh and as usual guys goodbye forever uh we'll see you next time